Here is a 2023 Maserati Gracale GT in Bianca Astro over Nero Interior. Is this the best Maserati to buy considering the MSRP is in the 60 thousand dollar price point. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and that's what I'm going to go over. Starting off with the front fascia, the LED headlights are derived from the MC20, which is a near $300,000 sports car. The new modern oval logo stretching a longer front overhang. Working down the lower, everything's functional, front parking sensors and a 360 degree reverse camera. I personally would option the GT more of a base. This one's more fully loaded, which you'll see that's going to take care of a lot of the amenities in the interior, making it a little bit more luxurious than exotic. Because when you're into the Gracali, you're starting to exit some of that exotic. It's bringing more of competition to the Porsche with the best ground clearance at eight inches. This is off the same platform as the Jeep Cherokee GT badging with the triple side air vents that was designed back in 1947. So it's paying a lot of heritage to the past, present, and future. Red brake calipers housing four pistons in the front. And this is not just a sports utility. You have a payload over 1,400 pounds, towing over 5,500 pounds with the all new 2.0 liter turbo L4 MHEV engine, which produces 296 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque paired to the eight-speed ZF automatic transmission. And you can get the Trofeo, which has the same engine as the MC20, it's detuned, which is a V6 twin turbo Neptuna engine, 523 horsepower. And a zero to 60 in that is gonna be under four seconds. Here, you're just a touch over five seconds. A BMW, a Porsche, it's not gonna be the fastest variant. But when you get into the Trofeo, it starts putting a lot more pressure onto those rivals and bringing more of the signature touches into the rear. The C-pillar gets the trapezoidal panel with the redesigned Maserati logo. A boomerang tail lights. This is pairing heritage 3200 GT. The lower keeps that aggressive style with the quad exhaust tips. I do like what I'm seeing for the exterior appearance. Lower roof spoiler, everything gloss black. There's no matte black that's going to leave that chalk look. And it sets up a little bit into the rear with a power trunk lid, 18.9 cubic feet of storage underneath the floor, tire pump and fix a flat. Split fold the rear bench in the back at a 60-40 split that will increase we have the all new four cylinder turbocharged 2.0. We need to go inside, start it up, so we can hear if that sounds like a Maserati. 12 way power seat adjustment, heated and ventilated with the Maserati badging in the headrest and the contrast stitching. Upgraded 21 speaker Sonus fiber with over a thousand watts. More digital, that's what we're going to start off with a 12.3 upper screen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. You have a performance page which is live. It'll show the consumption, the torque, very similar to the Dodge lineup push button to put it into drive, reverse, or manual. Push it into reverse. We have a 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory, and you can change the camera layouts. The lower is an 8.8 .8 inch dual climate control settings. Everything for the exterior lighting. You can change the clock layout to a compass for the power, your G-force. I like to leave it on the clock. The ambient lighting to turn on and off the auto start stop, an area for a 
smaller phone and in here you'll have your USB ports and a storage compartment with the cup holders. The new Maserati key fob and it's going to be more sporty, opens up into a pretty deep storage pocket with a 12 volt charger. Leather wrapped steering wheel, three spoke, this is out of the Alfa Romeo parts bin. Push button start, gloss black for the multi-function on the steering wheel which I don't like because you won't be able to see any of this in the sun. The paddle, sh the paddle shifters are aluminum, 12.3 digital gauge cluster that is configurable by three different settings. And you can go through here for the G-Force, tire pressure, leave it blank, or just leave it for your Apple CarPlay. The dashboard and the door panels configure in together, push the button to get out or pull this lever if that doesn't work. Gloss black comes back into play. One touch up and down for all the windows. A smaller storage pocket. Headroom is going to be pretty decent for the size of this vehicle. The same thing with leg room. For the back seats, headroom is still good and I'm six foot three. The same thing with leg space and what you're gonna notice with the Grucale is this does have more interior space than the Porsche. A little storage tray, air vent, two USB ports, storage behind both of the front seats. The door panel, same materials that's found into the front. The gloss black comes into play, but a smaller storage pocket in the center. It's gonna be a little bit more soft back here hard materials where the cup holders are. It's not a flat floor, slide over. You will be sharing feet space, but if the rails are pushed up, it's not so bad. But in shoulder space will also be shared, but considering this is a smaller SUV, headroom, and I could still fit in the center, it definitely has more interior space than the Porsche. We got it in sport mode right off the bat. When you put it into sport mode, you'll hear the exhaust filter inside, top speed at 149 miles per hour. Let's just see how well she performs. You get, you get that fun ride out of it. I'm not gonna go against it. I'm just not a big fan of the exhaust note that comes out of it. It just feels like a four cylinder and it doesn't really keep that heritage of a Maserati. Let's see how well she performs on the exit here. It's not a great dynamics. I have to say BMW will hold itself a little bit better and when you're considering this is over $65,000 MSRP, you really want it to perform at least comparable to the Germans. And I've done this many a times with the BMW and here, I just don't feel as confident. It does slide a little bit when you're into the GT. I would say the Modena will be the sweet spot because you're getting over 300 horsepower here. It's a Maserati that has 296 horsepower. Gonna give her a little go here. I like that the power is very instant. It feels a little bit more lively at a lower note, so it does give you good feedback whenever you're pushing the gas pedal in the sense of you're wanting to pass and move in and out of lanes, you can do so. It's not that wide of a vehicle, it doesn't portray it either. The interior, the windows are very large, so for safety you can see pretty much throughout the cabin. Now that's going to take me to some things I like and dislike, and let's start off with what I like. You get the technology for the 21st century in a Maserati. This is unheard of. The disadvantage is it's more tech driven than exotic. And I would say luxury is after the technology. Going back to some things that I like, you have a sufficient amount of storage compartments, even though it's not necessarily a lot here. It would be better if they had a pass through that would utilize more, but you had the best in class leg space and cargo capacity is easy to load. And this is the best ground clearance in its class. I like that the clock can be changed and altered. So if you want to have the G meter, so it's more playful for the front occupants and even for the rear to see, it just makes this more of that sports car hip feel. The steering wheel, I like that we got the push button start here because it's more or less the Ferrari way and the paddle shifters are still aluminum. 
this is coming out of the Alfa Romeo. I wish that this was a little different. I don't like the gloss black because it's everywhere and it does make it a little bit hard to see any of the multi-functionality, especially when you're trying to engage cruise control. I found it personally very difficult with the sun hitting it. I had to kind of do like this and move my hand over it. The same thing with the infotainment screen. I hate to say all these things I dislike mixed in, but everything is derived in this system. The lower bit, it's pretty user friendly, but you do have to look off the road multiple times in order to use it. The auto start stop is something also that's a con because it lowers the climate control and then when it engages, it kind of turns it off and then turns it back on with the car. And you can hear the sound deadening because all the speakers are giving us the exhaust note. So it almost puts like a little bit of a bass. Chimes are not my favorite. It's a little bit older considering this is a 21st century type of vehicle. I would have liked to see more hip charms, something a little bit more classy or sporty. The seats are not going to be as wide as some of the competition. This is actually going to be one of the least in class. So it's a bit narrow. We don't have any manual cushion extensions or any cushion extensions at all. The ventilated seats and heated seats are awesome. You feel it all the time. And the footwell area because I'm tall sometimes I like to move my legs back and I hit this wall because they put the seats up on a pedestal but the fun to drive spirit is it worth the buy let's see one thing I have noticed driving this throughout the day is you can get the speeds up pretty quick in which will give you a pretty fast speeding ticket so is it fast enough I think so it's not gonna be as fast as some of the competition and because it's a four-cylinder turbo I wish that they at least gave us 350 horsepower on all of the trims or the base trims and 400 go into the Modena because you're at over 500 for the Trofeo but I understand what they're doing stopping it grabs really good turn radius and we're gonna switch it on the fly to sports two lanes Give her a go, downshift, here we go. You get the Alfa Romeo slash Ferrari spit on the exit whenever it hits higher RPMs, but I'm not necessarily a fan of the spit, especially considering it's a Maserati, but we are also going into new times, and because the engines are getting smaller, I am glad to see that we still have performance underneath this and it kicks you back quite enough. So it does have that fun to drive spirit. It's not necessarily as dynamic as most of the Maseratis. The GT is a great value, but I would say the Modena would be the better option if you are looking to get your feet wet with the brand.